Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Mindful Monday. If it's your first time here, welcome. We always like to hear where you're coming from. You can uh, put that in the comments. Uh, also, if you write mindful in the comments, that'll subscribe you to our uh, newsletter, which gives you the free PDFs on what we cover today. So we're having sparkles today because we're talking about how to become an energy healer using Reiki and what it can do for you. So some folks like to ask, and we just did a training here um, over the weekend, which is what inspired this today, because a lot of folks are like, what is Reiki? So Rei stands for universal or transcendent uh, spirit, and Ki, otherwise known as Chi or Prana, stands for life force energy. So together, it means a universal life force energy, and this energy is transmitted through the practitioner. And so Usui Reiki Ryohogaki is the Usui Reiki spiritual uh, energy healing system. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the history of Reiki. And so it came about, we really think that Reiki is kind of an ancient practice, but it, uh, it was created or founded, shall we say, by uh, Mikeo Usui, who is Japanese. And he discovered it in March of 1922 when he was doing a 21 day Buddhist retreat that involved, of course, prayer, meditation, chanting, fasting, and all the like. And he became so overflowing with joy. There's a story of him being immersed in a, a waterfall and opening up his crown chakra. And he came running out all filled with joy and um, stubbed his toe. And all of the healing that he'd done in those 21 days was infused within him and he directed it to, into his toe by placing his hands around it. And he realized that that actually healed the pain in his toe. So he went about and he experimented and practiced on many other people. And he went on to train about 2000 people in uh, his form, which is Usui Reiki. Um, he was very intuitive. So this, the way that we do Reiki today actually came about from one of his disciples who was called uh, Dr. Hayashi. And Dr. Hayashi was actually a medical doctor. So he developed the hand positions that we use today and had folks beginning to lie on massage tables as opposed to, you know, or treatment tables, I guess, in those days, as opposed to just being seated and Usui doing his own kind of thing. And so Dr. Hayashi developed these hand positions around the different energy centers or chakras, which are also known as meridians or acupuncture, acupressure points, nadis. And so Reiki was actually brought to the West by a Hawaiian woman. Um, her name was Ta uh, oh, Hawaii. I always say this wrong, but Hawaii Takata. Takata is her uh, last name. And she actually, uh, it was about 1935, she persevered in uh, Tokyo in convincing Dr. Hayashi to not only uh, teach her Reiki, but to attune her to the highest, to the master level which was quite a feat um, in a patriarchal society and also being a woman and an American woman during the war times. So she went back to Hawaii then and was you know, practicing, but it wasn't until 1970 that she started attuning folks to the master level. And she believed that there should be no written manuals, no written handouts. Um, folks paid $10,000 in 1970 to be attuned to master level. She also um, wanted to keep Reiki pure, only one Reiki master and said that uh, it should cost $10,000 to become a Reiki master. Uh, so there were a lot of rules and stuff. It's a little bit different today, obviously. So where does Reiki come from? Um, the meanings, the symbolism. Reiki comes from the Japanese kanji, which is the ideogram or characters th that are used in written Japanese language. So the top part of the kanji is depicting clouds or rain with light, and love floating down from the heavens. The middle part shows three squares or three open mouths that symbolize the body, the mind, and the spirit. Or all together, they symbolize the healer, the practitioner, directing spiritual wisdom down through them with the, the process of intention. And then the lower part of the kanji represents life force energy and it's depicted by the earth upon which there's a bowl of rice and there's steam coming out of the rice, wafting up from the rice, and that is the life force energy, the breath, the, the prana, the chi, the ki. And so it can be said that the whole meaning of the kanji goes something like this. Upon the earth stands a spiritual being with his or her hands raised up to the heavens. And from the heavens, a rain descends, bringing down a healing energy of the universe and bestows this upon the being with blessings and it makes them a conduit of the Reiki. 
And so Reiki is transferred by attunements from a Reiki master down to a student in an energetic and meditative process that opens up the student's energetic centers or chakras, nadis, meridians, as we talked about. It also does a few things in their inner consciousness, kind of directing them and adjusting them so that they are able to channel the Reiki then. And so Reiki is spiritual. It is not allied with any religion. It's completely spiritual. Uh, one of the main principles, well, it's not actually a principle because there are actual things called principles, but one of the main parts of Reiki is the intention setting. That's very important in the whole process. So as I said, there are five elements of Reiki, and the first one of those elements is five principles. And the principles are lovely and they're used as meditations on a daily basis and in uh, the beginning part of the session. And so they go like this and they're little variances by different folks. But just for today, I will not worry. Just for today, I will not anger. Just for today, I will do my work honestly. And just for today, I will give thanks for my many blessings. And just for today, I will show love and respect for all living beings. Uh, a second uh, element of Reiki is the breathing techniques that we utilize. The third element is actually the hands-on, or that can be done hands hovering. It can also be done distance healing. Uh, fourth element is the symbols and the mantras. Uh, and then we have the fifth element, which is the actual attunements. And so it should also be noted that Reiki can never harm. It never depletes the practitioner because the energy doesn't come from them, but rather it moves through their hands. All right. So what are the benefits of Reiki? Um, Reiki is said to decrease anxiety, balance energy, uh, decrease pain and suffering, lower blood pressure, enhance the mood, uh, minimize feelings of fatigue, increase sense of peace and well-being, it enhances creativity, it can increase relaxation, boost the immune system, improve focus, and help to release old patterns of behavior, as well as balancing the emotions. So medical uses, uh, there's actually about over 800 hospitals in the U.S. right now that utilize Reiki. Um, some of them are ICUs, ORs, uh, there's hospice, even hospice in my area utilizes Reiki. There was a Hartford Hospital study that found that the use of Reiki improved patients' sleep by 86%. It reduced their pain by 78%. It decreased their nausea by 80% and it reduced anxiety um, of concerning pregnancy by 94%. I gotta say that's a lot better than a lot of medications we use. However, we're not saying that we use Reiki instead. It's an adjunct, at least in our country, in the way we intend it to be. We're not saying don't go to medical treatment. It is currently being researched though for mood issues, for pain, for use with cancer, for burnout in healthcare workers, et cetera, and much, much more. Uh, as I said, it's not meant to replace medicine or, or seeking Western uh, medical treatment. But the NIH, uh, National Institute of Health, did say, quote unquote, Reiki appears to be generally safe and the side effects were no more common amongst participants who received Reiki than among those who did not receive it. So that's a lot for the NIH to say anyway. So there are three different levels of Reiki. This is another question folks like to ask a lot. What does that mean? So when it comes to Reiki 1, and we tend to do Reiki 1 and 2 a lot of times together, it's just a really long kind of workshop. But Reiki 1, what happens is a student is going to learn a lot of this and some more about the history of Reiki. Uh, they'll receive an attunement, and then they can perform self-Reiki, which we recommend doing um, the self-Reiki practice for at least 30 days afterwards. And then they can go on to treat their pets, um, infuse inanimate objects with Reiki, um, they might even practice on uh, willing friends and family members. And then when you come in for Reiki 2, you'll have another attunement. Uh, you'll also receive three sacred symbols as well as the mantras that go with them. And then you can begin to work on others. Of course, you're doing Reiki 1 and 2 together. You still have to do the 30 days of, of self-Reiki before we suggest that you go out and practice on other folks. And then if you want to do Reiki 3, which is what's known as a Reiki master or the third degree, sometimes they're called levels, sometimes they're called degrees. Um, You'll review everything. Um, you'll learn some additional symbols. You'll get another attunement. You'll practice some breath work, some breath techniques, I should say. And then you are able to uh, teach Reiki and attune others to Reiki. And so how does a Reiki session work? Well, everybody is different, of course, but there are three main pillars of Reiki. So the first one is known as Gasho. It kind of looks like Namaste in yoga. The hands are at heart center. And this is where you would be meditating 
on those five Reiki principles that are the just for today, I will not anger, just for today, I will not worry, etc., etc. So you're also centering your breath here. You're perhaps repeating an intention, if a client gave you an intention, kind of centering in on that, centering in on them. You might do an invocation or prayer here. And then when we go on to the second pillar, which is called Reiki Ho, the practitioner is going to finish the invocation, raise their hands up like so, and then you can repeat something to the effect of, I am a pure channel of Reiki, may intuition guide me, and may my ego step aside. I kind of tend to say, may all Reiki masters come in and help me, past, present, future kind of thing. And then the next part is the practitioner is going to take their hands and kind of scan the area above the client or a recipient who's laying on the table now, uh, face up first, and they're kind of like, scanning for energy, feeling their aura kind of thing, connecting, feeling the intention, getting in touch with their breath. And then the actual uh, treatment part the th is the third uh, pillar, which is called Cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs> and that's the hands on. So keep in mind, you can also be having your hands hover if the person doesn't want to be touched. And Reiki can be sent from a distance, so the person doesn't even have to be in the room. The most common way that most people think about it is the hands on, that's why I'm saying that. And then the session is gonna end once again, by what we call smoothing out the aura, so your hands guide around over top of the client. And then you say something kind of like, I now seal this Reiki session in light and love. And so that is Reiki in a nutshell. So if you've enjoyed this version of Mindful Monday, I was inspired to do this because we did a Reiki one and two training here this weekend with some beautiful souls. And I am in the process, our breathwork workshop that is next weekend is going to go digital after that. And then my next digital uh, program will be the Reiki training. So that's why I wanted to do this. Of course, if you have any other topics you'd like to hear about, I love to hear your thoughts and you can type them in the chat or direct message me. Have a great Mindful Monday.